Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the EV side. Um, hope everyone is well. Um, this week I'm going to talk about average cost to run an electric car. Um, so stay tuned. Now, I've had my uh, BMW i3 for approximately about three to three and a half months now. Um, so I thought it'd be a good idea to put together a video that just shows uh, exactly how much uh, it's costing me to run the car. So my average journey on a day-to-day -day basis between um, home and work um, is about 35 to 36 miles. Um, so on a daily basis, that's 70 miles round trip, five days a week. Um, now. Uh, those that have watched the uh, the program before um, know I used to drive a Nissan uh, Qashqai uh, 1.5 diesel. Now, on average, that would cost me anywhere up to 200 to 240, 250 pounds a month. Um, electric cars are, funny enough, um, a, a damn sight cheaper. Um, so I wanted to give you an idea of how much cheaper and, and uh, if it's right for you and, you know, if you're only looking to do it to save money, then that's a really good reason to move to electric anyway, even if you know, you're not worried about all the other benefits that come with it. Um, now, um, I must say, I live, in, I live in a block of flats, so I rely on public charging as well, so um, I'm not gonna include a uh, cost for like a home charger and things like that, which you can get grants for and things like that. But So on average, um, it would cost me about five pounds, uh, 15, running at around, um, the normal uh, diesel prices uh, at the time um, one way so approximately about five to I would say anywhere between five and six pounds uh, for 35 miles um, so it's about ten pounds a day um, add that up 50 pounds a week um, so the, you know the average uh, the average price of that um, over the course of a month was 200 and 200 plus depending on obviously where I was going and things like that but just for work, it was cost me around two hundred pounds, and with everything else at the weekends, it would cost me a, 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 a little bit more than that. Um, now, if you take the same distances based on uh, national grid prices of electricity per kilowatt, which is uh, approximately about twelve p, but obviously that that fluctuates, uh, and depending on if you uh, charge at home and you've got uh, different economies and things like that on your electric, you can obviously scale that down at night. Um, but if you go with the average of 12p, it's actually costing me approximately about three pounds um, uh, over a course of probably two days uh, to fill my car up. Now my car can get anywhere between 130 and 150, so I can generally get about three trips, so there, back, and there, um, on one charge. So if we take that into account, over the course of a week, I'm actually only spending approximately about 10 pounds on electric to, to run my car. Um, over the course of the month, that's uh, 40 pounds. Um, and as you can see, the difference between 200 or 200 plus and 40 pounds is a big saving. Um, now, uh, for, for me personally, um, that, was a, that was a big saving. That was one of the contributing factors of getting an electric car, but obviously um, there was many other things, uh, doing the right thing. My car was up for renewal, so you know, it was, why not? You know, why not go electric and just take the leap? And for me, it was a, a bigger leap than maybe someone that lived in a house that could charge at home. Um, this has saved me a, gr a great deal of money. Um, now, uh, road tax is a zero at the moment. I'm sure at some point the government will find a, a great way of, of, of changing that, you know, once they know that there's more and more EVs on, on the road. Um, hopefully that won't change. Um, you know, zero emissions, everything should count for something. But government is going to get to some point where they're going to have to pay for the roads and pay for everything else when there's less diesel and less petrol cars on the road. That's probably a few years off, but expect it to happen at some point. But at the moment, free road tax. So an added benefit of uh, having an EV car. So um, those two things combine in itself. Now, um, moving forward, um, I've, I've got a, about an eight month year old car. So my first uh, service with BMW is not going to be until next year. Now, a service is almost like a check. So anyone that doesn't know electric cars, um, there's about a quarter of moving parts on an electric car compared to an, uh, a normal uh, petrol or diesel car. Um, so the service is very limited. You know, we check, they, they, they check, about obviously, wheels, brakes, 
um, and the electrics. Um, now I haven't been to one of these and hopefully when it goes to the service I'll be able to get some footage of you know what they're doing and things like that but again the cost of that is a lot cheaper there's less to do there's less of them to uh, less for things to go wrong um, the funniest experience I had uh, go put into a garage just to get a coffee was opening up the front uh, of the car the front of the car and people looking going well, where's the engine you know um, and I was just literally just picking up a coffee and picking up some uh, some water uh, washer fluid so um, you do get some some looks if you put into a, a pedal carriage which I don't often do um, but um, in terms of the cost of running it it's really worth it for that alone now cars and EV cars there's always a big misconception that they have to be expensive EV cars have moved on so much since they first came out with the Nissan Leaf and the Renault Zoe. Now, yes, you could go out and buy a brand new car. You could, if you got the money, buy you could buy a Tesla. You could buy a BMW i3. My BMW i3 was second hand, so it was it wasn't it wasn't brand new. Um, but there's Nissan Leafs out for about six thousand pounds if you don't do a huge amount of mileage and approximately about eighty miles worth of uh, range at a time. More than enough for most people, and that's six thousand pounds that's pretty cheap for a car and if you're saving everything else as well why wouldn't you um we've also got Renault Zoe so the Renault Zoe is um, a really good car it didn't fit for me because uh the the charge time on it was a bit longer than I needed to the range was great the range was something like 150 180 so it's close to the 200 mark um and I test drived it and they're really good cars and if you've got the ability to charge overnight at home it's a recommended uh, car. Same with Nissan Leaf, absolutely great little car. I absolutely loved it. And if I didn't have the amount of distance that I need to go, I'd have probably gone.